This is unit 4F. It deals with industrial tracers and it also deals with using half-lives to measure age or carbon dating or other isotopes also used for dating. So the first one then is tracers and we can see here on the left hand side we've got a tube carrying some kind of liquid uh, or a fluid, could be a gas, uh, water, oil and there could be a blockage, there could be a leak. Now we'll detect this as reduced flow at the end we'll have no idea where the leak is. Now digging up the pipe is very expensive it's much easier to put a small amount of radioactivity uh, or radioactive substance into the fluid. This will collect either at a blockage or a leakage, it will come out and we'll get a, a strong uh, signal, a, a large amount of gamma, it has to be gamma if it's the most penetrating. So then we come along with our detector and where there isn't anything we will get a just a background signal and then we'll get these peaks and so we can detect where the problem is and just dig up there and fix it. So what was this phrase I just used? Uh, background, what does that mean? Well, uh, here we have a picture of Marie Curie, one of the first people to investigate radioactivity properly, for which she got two Nobel Prizes, quite an amazing lady, and here she is looking at a sample in the foreground. So this is something she's interested in, she's uh, actually looking at in a detailed way, and that's going to give you quite an intense amount of radioactivity. But everything, and we really do mean everything, is a little bit radioactive. So the wood that the door is made out of, the floor, the air, uh, some cosmic rays here, uh, particles coming from the sun. So this is a background radiation that's just there all the time and we need to subtract it from any foreground readings. Now, as we said, it's um, always present, um, but we can kind of distinguish where it comes from. You can see here the majority comes from air, small from nuclear power, food, medical, uh, treatments, diagnostic procedures, space, cosmic rays we mentioned, and the ground. It's particularly a problem where you have granite and we get radon gas uh, coming out from the granite. Uh, moving on then to carbon dating. Now this is a, a little bit more involved um, but try and follow the argument uh, as best you can. So uh, we start off with the idea of matter again and hopefully by now we're familiar with the idea of the nucleus and we're also happy with the idea that there are different versions of a particular element. So carbon always has six protons by definition but it can have a range of numbers of neutrons and so the number here is the number of protons and neutrons together, the mass number and uh, we can see that here, we've just numbered them and this particular version, this particular isotope is carbon-14, it's the one we're most interested in. So carbon-12 is very stable, 13 is very stable, 15 is highly unstable, we can see here it's the order of hundreds of seconds and so is carbon-11. But carbon-14 is a very conveniently intermediate case. So the half-life is 5,730 years. We can see that here in this orangey color here. Now, the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere is very stable because more is being created by cosmic rays. So as long as a living thing is part of the carbon cycle, we can see here this tree is uh, taking in carbon dioxide and uh, turning it into the fibers of its leaves and of its branches and so on. So it's taking in carbon-14 all the time because it's alive. Now here's the crucial thing, as soon as it dies it can no longer take in any carbon-14, it's cut off from that source. So from that point onwards the amount of carbon-14 can only go down it, and as the individual atoms decay the number will go down, so we half the amount we started and, and their quarter, so two halvings. Now we came across this earlier, this is obviously half-life or the halving time we talked about. So if we come across this bowl and we don't know anything about it we can monitor the radioactivity coming from it so it's beta so these um, red uh, electrons are flying out hopefully you can see that there's more there than here and there's um, even fewer flying out there so we also know the standard rate when something has just been um, 
chop down. So that's 100%. That's 100% of it's the maximum, if you like. So if we come along and we read this as 50% at the maximum, and we know how carbon-14 behaves, we have this graph already, we can read off the fact that it was chopped down uh, 5,730 years ago. Now obviously I've taken a very obvious number there, but it could be any percentage, it could be 47, 15, uh, whatever you like. Uh, 25 would obviously be two half-lives. So we can use this graph to um, uh, date an object. Now, uh, just to come back to this, so the key event is, is the zeroing of the clock. It's an effectively a clock that, that ticks along and the clock is zeroed by it being cut off from the carbon cycle. So the half-life is uh, easily measured, very easily, so it's measurable, we just have to use a Geiger counter. It's predictable, um, it's one of the most predictable processes we have and it's very useful because it allows us to uh, date all sorts of artifacts to a range of about 50,000 years. Um, here we have a quick representation of, of beta decay, but turning back into uh, a neutron and the, the fast-moving electron. Now, whole life does exist. Um, it would be the moment when every single one of them have decayed, and it's incredibly unpredictable, as it says here. Um, you, it, it really is, again, one of the most genuinely unpredictable things. It's also completely unmeasurable, because you, you're talking about going down to the very last atom, and therefore it's it's totally useless. And, and just to reiterate, two half-lives do not make one whole life. Half-life means the halving time. So there we have it, carbon dating. Uh, carbon is the most obvious one. Other substances can do um, the same kind of job over very different time scales, uh, tens of millions or even billions of years, which allows us to mesh dates together. But carbon dating is certainly one of the most useful ones.